Hey, it's Ryan from D3 Technologies. In this video, I'm going to be talking about Fusion 360 and some workflows with the Extrude tool. So we'll be working with this clamp model for this exercise. And the first thing I want to do is I'm actually going to build some rubber caps to go over these end pieces. So I'm just going to hide the clamp arm and go ahead and build the, the cap right on top of the trigger assembly here. So of course, first step, I'm just going to do a sketch right on that face and a quick offset eighth of an inch and we'll exit that sketch. My number one tool for the extrude, my tip for the extrude tool is use the keyboard. E is the keyboard shortcut for extrude as you can see in my menu here. And of course I can also add it um, as it is by default in the menu there or I could add it to my toolbox. Um, but if you like keyboard shortcuts go ahead and just use the keyboard shortcut. I'm going to build a new component here, so we'll pick that option. And my second tip is to use your extant options. Now, a lot of people might just kind of zoom in here and eyeball it if they want it to line up with this back surface, or maybe they already know the distance and they're going to type it in. But a much easier and actually better way to do it is to pick the two object extant. Now you may try this and decide that it doesn't really do what it's supposed to and try to stop using it right away. But really we have two options, chain faces. This only works if the object you're extruding will hit the face you selected. In this case we just need to extend the face and it works great. The benefit of this tool is it's actually going to be adaptive to that face. If the face moves at any point in the timeline before this feature is calculated, and this feature would recalculate its distance to always match that face. Pretty awesome. So I'm going to actually activate this component now. And I'm going to go back into that extrusion feature. And we're just going to switch real quick to symmetric. Um, next thing I want to do is extend the middle piece out. So for this, I'm just going to start the extrude. And with the extrude tool, you do not have to have a sketch. You can also use any planar face to extrude. So even though I'm in another component, I can still pick that face on the original um, trigger and add the material to this component. Again, it doesn't really make sense to type in a value when I could just say, just extrude until you hit that object and, of course, extend the faces. Now I'm going to activate an analysis sectional cross-sectional analysis here and you'll notice that it actually is touching exactly maybe I want a little bit of a gap in here here's my last tip for you the start option is pretty awesome in fusion so you do not have to start an extrusion on the plane that the sketch was created on or the plane that you're extruding you can actually pick an offset and so I can just type a little bit of value that I want to offset and watch when I add this the offset starting point moved outwards. And of course, the distance didn't because I'm telling it to go until it hit a face. But if I had a distance in there, the distance would have moved off as well. And so with just a couple features there, I've got a nice clamp arm. Let me turn the analysis off here and reactivate my main assembly. I've got a, the start to a nice rubber clamp arm that's completely adaptive to the part that I built it on using just a couple extrusion tools. So I hope there are a couple tips in there that will help you out with the extrusion tool. Definitely pay attention to the offset and the extant options if you haven't already. As always, if you have any questions or need more information, feel free to contact our team. Thanks.